What's up everybody, TJ Grant here with Quad Poly and today we're going to be covering a brand new tutorial series on how to go from After Effects to Fusion. This was a topic that was suggested that I would cover in the motion graphics community as I realized that there are a number of After Effects artists who may be interested in seeing how Fusion works. Now, whatever your situation may be, whether you are looking to ditch After Effects or perhaps you're tired of using a subscription-based software, or perhaps you are just looking to implement uh, Fusion into your current pipeline. Whatever your reasons may be, I hope that these tutorials will be uh, very beneficial for you. Now, a little bit about myself. I have been in the design industry, in particular the CG industry, for uh, almost 18 years now, and for 13 of those years I have been using After Effects. And for the last five years, I have been using Fusion off and on, and it wasn't up until about three years ago that I really started to use Fusion full time. So I do understand some of the difficulties that can come from moving from a comp and layer based workflow over to using a node based workflow found inside of Fusion. So it is my hope with these tutorials that you'll learn a lot from them, and I will be sharing some of the tips and tricks that I've learned uh, so that I could better use Fusion. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in and I'll show you just how you can go from After Effects to Fusion. So a couple of things about these tutorials. I figured the best way to present this information is to show both After Effects and Fusion. So you're gonna see me flip back and forth between the programs. Second of all, when I'm inside of After Effects, I'm not going to explain everything that I'm going to do. I'm assuming that you already know how to use After Effects. But when I switch over to Fusion, I will be building up these little snippets from scratch so that you can see exactly how I did that inside of Fusion and how it can relate to After Effects. So for this example inside of After Effects, all I've done is I've added a text layer and a solid and it's inside of one comp. Now we're gonna recreate this exact same thing over inside of Fusion. So in Fusion here, up at the top, you'll notice that there is a toolbar. Now these have some very common nodes that you can choose from. Alternately, if you right click down in the flow editor, you can go to add tool and there are categories and different nodes that you can choose from here. Or alternately, if you have an idea of a node or a process, you can control and hit spacebar, which will bring up a search command, and you can simply just type in what you're looking for. So in our case, I need a text node. So I'm gonna choose the text plus node and click OK. Now you'll notice that a node came up. So all you need to do to view that is to drag it up into one of these viewports. And down here, you'll have your size options. I'm just going to click fit so that we can see the entire uh, canvas here. And inside this text tool, we won't go over everything, but we will at least just go ahead and get some text on the screen. So under your text box here, I'm just going to type in quad poly. And I'm just going to change the size for now. Now that we have this text, we need to add in a background or a solid if we wanted to use After Effects terms. So the closest thing that we have in Fusion that would act like a solid is the background node. So we can click on BG up in the toolbar here and that will add in a background node. And we'll just drag it off into the viewport here. Next, we can come over here and pick a color. So let's just make it blue to match. So now we need to merge these two nodes together. Now, every node has an output and an input, okay? And if you hover your mouse over it, you can see what kind of input it's looking for. So the blue ones, or these purple ones, are looking for masks. So what would happen is if I were to merge these two together the way that they are, if I were to move this text into the background, you'll notice that it will act as a mask. 
but that's not what we're looking for. I want the white text over the blue. So the way that you would do that inside of Fusion is with a merge node. So we'll click on MRG and create a merge node. Now the merge node contains several inputs. It also has a purple one for mask, but we're not going to cover that today. But what we are looking at is the yellow and the green arrow. The yellow arrow is the background and the green arrow is the foreground. So all we need to do is move the background into the yellow arrow and move the text into the green arrow. And then let's drag this merge into this viewport. And there we have our text overlaid on top. So with these two nodes now merged together, in similar fashion, that is kind of like a layer. You have the background and the foreground. Just like in After Effects, you have one layer on top of another. Now, often what happens when you're working with complex projects inside of After Effects, you may go and pre-compose this layer so that your text now lives in a separate comp so that you can edit this text and have it propagate over into however many different comps that you want that text to be in. So the way it works in Fusion is, check this out. Let's create a background and let's create another merge node. So we know that we want this background to be in the background, so that's the yellow arrow. And now we can take this output of the text and move it into the green arrow. And so now it's feeding both of these comps. And for the background node, I'm just gonna make a gradient so that we can see differently uh, how it looks. So I'm just going to add in some color here. So in similar fashion, I have done exactly what we have done inside of After Effects. You'll notice that in After Effects, I have one comp, and then I have the text feeding the other comp. Well, in Fusion, this comp, this group of nodes, could act or be similar to a comp, just as much as these are similar to a comp. Now, because we're working with a flow, we could come in here and say, inside of this comp, let's just add a blur. And if I hold down shift and go over the wire, that will connect it for us. And inside of this blur tool, let's just increase the size. All right, so what's happening here is that this text is flowing into this blur, which means that only the text is going to get blurred. And then it's going to merge into the foreground of this merge node, while the background is still the background, okay? Now, what I can also do is, let's say I want to move these two together so that they are combined. Well, I could take yet another merge node and I can drag this into the background. And then I want to put this comp on top of this comp. So I can drag the output onto the foreground here. And now if we look at it, you won't notice anything different from this comp because this comp is acting as the foreground. But inside of this merge node, we also have blend modes. In Fusion, it's called apply modes. But all you need to do is click on this and let's say we want the overlay. So if we were to kind of look at this like it was After Effects, we have this text in its own comp. We have another comp that this text is feeding into. We have a third comp that this text is feeding into. And then finally, we have one more comp that all of these are referencing into. Okay, but inside of Fusion, this is where the flexibility of nodes come from. So when you're working in the flow editor, one of the best ways to view this, that I've learned at least, is that this flow represents your chain of thought, okay? 
that you as an animator went from point A to point B, from beginning to end. And what makes it really nice is that I can go back to this project many months from now, no matter how complex this flow may get. And I will be able to trace exactly what I did just by merely looking at the flow. Okay, unlike After Effects, if this project became extremely complex, I would have a lot of comps listed here. I may have multiple tabs open. The, you know, each of these comps could have many layers, and those many layers could have many effects, and those many effects could have many keyframe animations. And so if I ever need to make a change, I need to think about what did I do to get to that point? But inside of Fusion, I have everything laid out before me. So if I understand that this node feeds into this node, then feeds into this node, and then feeds into this node, and now I know that this node also feeds into this separate one and goes into here, it makes it very easy to continue that chain and that line going down and following it to reach the end point. Now I know this example was very simple, but it teaches a lot on how to construct a node network because you're going to be using these merge nodes quite a bit. And you'll also be able to make use of having certain nodes be kind of the driving factors for multiple different nodes going throughout the entire flow. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up this tutorial, but I hope that you can begin to see just how flexible working with these nodes can be as to compared to a comp and layer workflow that you find inside of After Effects. But you also notice that there is some similarities. You can have nodes that feed into multiple different nodes that you can always go back and continually change and have that propagate throughout your project. So that's it for part one of this tutorial series today. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. The next part we will be covering is animation, keyframes, and the graph editor. If you like this channel, please like and subscribe so that you can stay tuned for when I release new tutorials. That being said, stay inspired, keep pushing those pixels, and I will see you in the next tutorial.